ladies and gentlemen, as I just entered this room, the host before me just asked you a question. That how many of you love mathematics? I missed the question. Uh, I didn't get the full the, get to hear the, uh, see the response to the question fully. So, um, but it appeared to me from Muskan's talk that not many of you probably like mathematics. Uh, it's a strange and fallacious situation that probably mathematics, which is probably the simplest and most practical of all subjects, is considered to be hardest and most abstract by most. I want to show today that mathematics, in fact, is actually the simplest and most practical of all subjects. And <clears throat> I'm going to do that by talking about application of mathematics in simple activities of daily life of yours and mine. Three particular activities or things, places that I'll talk about is wine drinking, having fight, war, and of course, in classroom. I would like to start with a couple of questions to all of you. Very simple questions, which does not require much, except for um, a slight response. If you would be kind enough to raise your hand, uh, if you want to answer yes to the next following questions. One first question, I think, has been already asked by Mushkan with the fear that my, just the mention of my talk would drive shiver and fear through many people's minds. So let's start me, let's, let's start with the first question that's here. How many of us love, how many of us here love doing maths and find it really easy? One, two, three, four, five, good, uh, well, uh, quite a few. Good. Not too many, though. Mm. Let's see, ask you the second question. How many of us here love to eat and find it really simple? Everybody. Great. In fact, that brings me to the situation that if you love to eat, then you are in a great potential to learn mathematics. Because, you know what, trust me, eating, will re eating does require, eating will require, Eating has always required a great amount of mathematics. And if you are good in eating, let me tell you, then you are already good in math. No question. Let me explain to you by this particular statement of mine, by a particular problem. I will pose this problem in two different manners. First, let's put it in, a, in an abstract way. Suppose I have this cube, cube is a box, which has some surface area, and I want to split this cube. Let's suppose we are asking this question to a 12-year-old child, and ask her this, that if and when I split this cube into smaller parts, what happens to the surface area of this cube. Is the surface area, combined surface area of the smaller cubes greater or lesser than the cube, than the original one? It may sound abstract to many 12 years old, maybe within many of us also. But let's suppose, instead of asking this, we ask her the following question. Let's give her a butter cube and with a knife and ask her what happens to the surface area when the butter cube is cut into pieces by a knife. Does the total surface area exposed increase? Does it go up or does it go down as a result? First of all, ladies and gentlemen, let me tell you, if the first question sounded abstract to, or uninteresting to her, this question probably will not. Most probably, 
This is going to be her response. When she cuts, she will see that the small parts are now coming out with more faces up, out. She'll probably tell, see, look, the surface area is increasing. And she solves this question in this manner. You might think, well, this is a very simple and trivial question. This is not what real mathematics is. The speaker has just given you one very common, simple example just to suit the audience. Ladies and gentlemen, let me tell you that this is not so. Real mathematics is exactly done this way. Let me talk about the way the mathematics is discovered. How mathematics is discovered? I think many of us have the idea that mathematics is discovered by weird people going around with the idea a square plus b square is equal to c square. Probably going with a triangle in their hand and roaming around in a weird fashion and then discovering theorem. Nothing is farther from the truth. Mathematics is done. New mathematics is discovered in a way to solve problems, practical daily problems, in the days of yours and mine. What you and we do is math, all the times, consciously or unconsciously. If we just spend a little time to understand the logic behind those things, we would love mathematics. If, we, if I give you one example now, that mathematics, one of the great pieces of mathematics had been actually discovered by not eating, but by drinking. There was a young man in love. And this man wanted to marry. And when he wanted to marry, he, of course, wanted to invite guests and ordered drinks for them. So he ordered wine for them. This was the year 1603. So at that point of time, people used to drink and buy wine in barrels. The barrels did not come with a measure of one liter, two liter like this. The way of measuring the barrels was something like this. This is a barrel, similar to the gas cylinder that we use at home. And the amount of the wine in this barrel used to be measured this way. The wine merchant would put a stick through a hole at the top and measure the length of the stick. By measuring the length of the stick, he would estimate how much wine is in this barrel. Let me run through this once more, back. This is the process. The wine merchant would pass the stick. Longer is the stick, assumption is more is the wine in the barrel. Now, <coughs> this person did understand that something might go, go wrong because there might be two barrels. You can see the barrel in the right is obviously bigger than the barrel in the left. But the stick length in the right is not bigger than one in the left. So he might end up having less wine for his guests. That's bad. Everybody, no, none of us probably would like to have less amount of wine for our guests. So how to get the right amount of wine for his guests? This is what this young man said to think about. The name of the young man was Johannes Kepler, one of the great German mathematicians, astronomer. And he came out with a solution that what should be the shape of the barrel for which the volume of the barrel, volume of the wine contained in the barrel is maximum for this length of the stick. And using that, he proposed that everybody should buy barrels of this shape and wine should be sold in this type of shape. Even today, 
this application is done. This all this particular thing actually started off a very important field of mathematics. In case you felt eating was not a great mathematical activity, well, this is it because this is this created optimization. Those of us who do not know optimization, let me tell you, we all try to use an optimization in business. We want to maximize our profit. We want to minimize our losses. We want to maximize our happiness. We want to minimize our sorrows, difficulties. And this process of optimization, the mathematics and science of optimization started from a man in love wanting to have good amount of drinks. So after a man has got his food, is in love, and has have, have got his drinks, what does a man want? Fight. That is what we humans probably want. We want to have a fight. And fight is another common activity, which also has given rise to great amount of mathematics. And let us now tell, let, let me tell you a story about a young Indian mathematician who wanted to design the best, um, best type of bow for his war and started a field, solved a problem of a field which was not going to start more than 1000 years later. The problem he wanted to do was to design the best bow. And for that, every one of us, I think, have seen a bow. This uh, right portion is a circular arc and has a span. Different persons, different bowsmen with different shape will have different size, will want to use different sizes of bows. How to determine which size, what would be the size of a bow? for a particular angle of swing. This is what this young Indian mathematician, Aryabhatiya was his name, or Aryabhatiya, some people call him, was his name, and he wanted to measure that what would be the span of this bow. Or really, what he did was, he found the half span of this, of this bow. This half span from the top to here. What would be the half span of this bow? He measured this, produced a table. And when he did that, what he did was the first table, first table, which gave two interesting quantities. One of them is sine x. Another of them is cos x. How did the names come in? The names come in actually sin x or cosine x. Names actually came in from the work of this young armor designer, 23 years old. That was the age of Aryabhatiya at that point of time. Aryabhatiya called this half span of the bow to be Artha J, the word in Sanskrit for half chord. This and he called this base or the west of the jo of the bow to be koti ja. The word koti means kamar or west in English. This <coughs> word ja got translated as jib in Arabic. The jib, the pocket. Now, what is pocket or what is jib? How could this be jib? The European translators wondered about, they thought, talking about this hole. So they translated as hole or a sinus, the word, Latin word for hole. And that's how the word sign came in. And for koje, kotije, the word came in as cosine. This <coughs> first listing of sine x and cos x Aryabhati also showed how these quantities vary. With x, how does this quantity vary? This is exactly the problem of differential calculus. Just calculus was still 1000 years away to be discovered. 
And so this is how, <coughs> ladies and gentlemen, mathematics, beautiful mathematics, wonderful mathematics is discovered. And by doing things that you and I do in our life. Let us now get to the last portion of our talk. <coughs> How does mathematics look like in classroom? This is a snapshot of the copies of a this is a snapshot of the copies of a sensor student with the notes taken from with an additional advice that all these notes should be memorized into heart. Does it sound familiar? Do these kind of notes, do these kind of scribblings sound familiar to many of us? They look lovely or painful. And this monster, mind-numbing expression in the board, is a question asked in a very recent All India examination. <clears throat> what is the use of this? Are we teaching our st students to love mathematics, to discover mathematics, to understand the joy of mathematics? Ladies and gentlemen, we are not. What you're doing, we are asking them to chug and plug, memorize formula, solve the questions by that. What is the response of the students? This is a typical response of a student. During the three years I spent in college, my time was wasted. I attempted mathematics and even went with a private tutor, a very dull man. But I got on very slowly. The work was repugnant to me. Many of our experience in life. Only this was the experience of Charles Darwin. If such a brilliant man felt it in this way, then even I can understand why we may not love mathematics. Let's see the, ex the expression of a teacher, a great teacher of mathematics, who was also the discoverer of Srinivas and Ramanujan, had this statement that we teachers repel away a lot of students from mathematics just by poor teaching just by those kind of scribbles that you have seen there. So why do we teach that way? Why don't we teach students to love mathematics? To, why don't we teach students to problem solve? Why don't we teach students to discover things? They may not succeed, they may fail, but this failure is also a, an experience which is part of learning mathematics. Failure is the experience to be alive, damn it. Why don't you do it then? We will probably never know the answer because we never asked. Thank you.